Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to get your flux core welding machine set up properly. Now here I have a Lincoln MIG Pack 140. I got a Canadian tire when I was 17 years old. It was really the first real welder I ever purchased. I only have ever ran flux core in it. I don't have a gas bottle for this machine. I have a gas bottle for my TIG welding, but I just run flux core on this currently. Um, I've never ran hardwire or MIG through it. So first off, I'll go over the difference. MIG uses a gas from a compressed gas bottle and a solid wire. And that is what the, so the gas from the gas bottle shields the weld. A flux core is like a stick rod, a stick electrode, where it has a flux that burns off while you're welding and that creates the, the fumes coming off of the burning is the gas that protects the weld. So the big issue with flux core, it gets a horrible rap. Now, before I get into it, there's two main types of flux core. There's gasless flux core, which is what we're going to be talking about today, where you don't use a gas. And then there's dual shield flux core, which has a flux in the wire, as well as you run a gas bottle on it. We're not talking about that. That's for more industrial use. A lot of people won't have that in their garage. So this is just for when you're running a gasless flux core wire. So in this machine, I have a 10 pound spool of uh, Lincoln 211. Basically that is a, not a great wire, not gonna lie. It's a wire made for thinner steels and it's, it's basically designed so that you can weld sheet metal with it. So it's not an amazing wire, it gets porosity pretty easily, but when set up correctly, it still runs very nicely. And a lot of people are missing the key component to running flux core. There's one technical thing that these machines come set up for that you have to reverse. And that is the polarity, which I'll get into. So you can buy machines like this for much cheaper. I know Yeswilder makes them, uh, Princess Auto here in Canada makes them, Harbor Freight makes them, where they don't even have a gas inlet. They will not weld with gas. You have to run flux core in them. And even those machines come set up improperly. Now, not all of them, but some of them do. And I'm gonna show you what they've done wrong. But there is one key feature here that I've seen YouTube videos of even some YouTube welder YouTubers that are pipe welders and they don't know how to run a flux core machine. There's one key thing you have to remember when running flux core, and I'm gonna show you, it makes a huge difference. So let's get into it. Okay, so I have here a piece of scrap that I've cleaned up. I'm gonna run a couple inches with the machine set up improperly and how it comes from the factory. And then I'm going to run with a couple inches of it set up the way it's supposed to be ran. And you're gonna see a huge difference here. And this is the main complaints that people have with flux score is cause they don't know how to set it up. Okay, so here's test one with the machine set up, how it comes from the factory and how it's set up improperly for flux core. Okay, so here's the weld. It looks horrible. There's splatter everywhere, and it didn't really blend into the plate very nicely. I'll clean it up and we'll get a better look at it. Okay, so I put a, took a wire wheel to it. You can see there's an intense amount of splatter. The weld, I held it as straight as possible, but the puddle bounces around everywhere, and it just looks horrible. That's because it's not set up properly. A lot of people think flux core is just a horrible way to weld. Believe it or not, a lot of skyscrapers are welded together with this type of wire. So it can be used properly. When it's used improperly, you get these horrible BBs and just a, a wonky looking weld. Okay, now, now that we saw it run horribly, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. We'll open up the welder, here's all the feed. You know, the feed wheels and the whole mechanism and everything. There are two leads down here. This is attached, so you can see this cable. That's the ground cable. 
And currently it's hooked into, you can see here, I don't know. You can see this is the negative terminal, which is what you would want if you're MIG or stick welding. That's not what you want for flux core. You want the, the ground clamp hooked to the positive side. So right now this is the lead that goes to the gun, your lead. It is positive and negative ground. So you gotta swap these. This is super easy to do in this Lincoln, but this is how it comes from the factory. They assume from the factory that you're gonna be welding normal gas shielded MIG. So it comes like this. So all you gotta do is take your wing nuts off. And swap the leads over. Believe it or not, some of the cheaper machines from Harbor Freight and other companies from overseas come set up incorrectly. They don't come set up like this. They don't even, some of them don't even have the capability of running gas and they're still, leads are still set up as if they're ready to run a gas shielded MIG wire. So you gotta find where your leads are. The easiest way is to trace your ground cable for the ground clamp. Trace it in the machine, find where it hooks up, and you should be able to find the, the lead for your gun as well and swap them so that again, your ground is positive and your gun is negative. Now the reason it needs to be like that is the wire doesn't, you don't want all the heat on the wire. You want it more in the material for flux core. So when you put, it, the arc has more force into the material if it's got a positive ground than it did, does if it has a negative ground. So what's happening there before is the wire, the flux core wire, when you have this hooked up to the positive, this wire is blowing up and exploding and melting way faster than it should. So it doesn't penetrate into the material and the wire just melts everywhere and that's why you see all that spatter. And I also have to run a much higher wire speed when I'm running, when I ran it with the ground on the negative side. So swapping this over will make it weld like way, way, way better. Okay, so now I've, that I've switched the leads over and I put it to straight polarity, that's what that's called when the ground is negative. I mean, when the ground is positive and your lead is negative, that's called straight polarity. And then reverse polarity is when your gun is positive and your ground is negative. So. I'm going to turn it on, we're going to run a bead, and you're going to see how much better this stuff runs. Okay, so there it is before it's cleaned off. Right away you can see that it's much, it's blended in much more. It's not all wobbly everywhere. There's much less spatter opposed to that. That's a crazy amount of spatter. This stuff over here, a lot of it comes off with just a file. So I'm gonna clean, and also the slag isn't trapped very much. It comes off pretty easily here. Like just scraping a file on it. You can see half the slag already fell off. So I'll clean this up and we'll take a better look at it. So I took a wire wheel to it and you can see basically all the splatter came off. So the, there, it's a myth that flux core is extremely spattery. It is while you're welding it, but a lot of the spatter comes off. Now you can see if you have it set up improperly, the spatter is gonna stay there. Like, like I said, that's the wire burning up too fast and just blowing up everywhere. So if your machine is set to the right polarity, which for some reason people can't, even professional welders bash flux core because they don't know how to run it. So you can see it did a pretty good job. I'll do some vertical welds with it and you'll see how nice it can come out. Okay, so there we go. That looks pretty good. It looks a lot like a 332 7018 bead. 
That's because this wire is basically 7018 in wire form. This, um, but you can, compared to down here, huge dramatic change when you switch that polarity up. So if you're having troubles with your flux core, it most likely, if it looks like this, then you have your polarity wrong. Just another quick tip here, two more. Uh, this welder is not plugged into a, your regular house circuit. It's plugged into a 20 amp circuit. So that's one thing to know about most welders that are 110 is that in a lot, some of the modern stuff is actually really amazing. You can run it off a 15 amp breaker, but most of these 110 machines perform at their finest when running off a 20 amp circuit. So here, this machine is plugged into a 20 amp circuit. Here's my 15 amps that I would normally use for grinders and everything. And then I had this installed, which is a 20 amp circuit just for this welding machine. So I have two outlets in my garage for it. You can run an extension cord, a 12 gauge uh, extension cord out of that and move this machine anywhere you want. I've used it outside before. Keep that in mind, a 20 amp circuit is gonna make these machines, any machine that's 110 perform at its maximum uh, power. Otherwise, you're gonna be tripping the breaker on a 15 amp circuit in most cases. Also, your wire. If you buy very cheap welding wire, it's not gonna perform very well. So the better wire you get for it, the better you're gonna have, the better weld you're gonna have. So that's another thing to look out for. Don't cheap out on your wire. I mean, for this machine, I'm running the Lincoln 211, but I'm gonna look into something else. Uh, Lincoln has a few other wires that they make. This wire, is, the 211 is designed for like sheet metal and some multi-purpose wire. I want something more for just sticking like quarter and steel together and stuff like that.